Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Indeed, it's a joy and a privilege once again to be here this morning to minister the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health and happiness uh, regardless of the situation in our country and around the world, especially our political situation in our country. You know, this thing seems not to be over. It's getting worse and worse every day. Praise the Lord. You know why? Because uh, the caretaker government, uh, President David Arthur Granger, is telling his supporters they want election. He is peddling lies, telling untruth, telling his supporters he won the 2nd of March election and how the PPP has fraud with dead votes and migrated votes and all sorts of nonsense and creating havoc in this country. So this thing actually will lead to a riot as I see it. This thing will get worse, probably get, will get worse than the 60s. And all because of the APNO leaders, Bassett Williams and the caretaker president Granger and Harmon, these people are, are peddling lies and causing corruption and confusion in this nation. And you see all the burning down in Georgetown and all the fires, it's APNO doing the work. And they continue to do that. They want to destroy this beautiful nation. But I trust the Lord that they will receive sanctions and they, 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 they suppose they come and do something because this thing will go on. Because even today at 2 o'clock, if Lonefield is fired, and Myers probably will do the same thing, and they have court cases one after the other, and the charade will continue, and the people will suffer. By the end of this all, as a man of God, I believe that justice should be served and many will go to prison. Because holding an Asian hostage and trying to steal an election almost six times, I don't know what is happening. So this is not a 60s, it's not a 70s, it's not an 80s, it's not a 90s. This is a 21st century. Can you imagine what was happening before? Now, it's the 21st century. The world has seen, I always have a sin, all I, I, I always have a sin. And God has a way of exposing sin. And God is exposing the sins for all these years of rigged election. Rigged election. People want power drunk so much they do anything to keep in power. But in this country, we must have democratic rule. No dictatorship rule. The dictatorship will be sanctioned. No matter what, sanction will be served. But all sanction is not good for this country. It will damage not only the people at the top, but the entire beautiful nation. If you go back and check all my messages, I always say that Guyana can become one of the, as a brink of becoming one of the richest nations in the world. And also Guyana at the brink of the destructive people of becoming one of the rogue, condemned, destroying nations of the world. Now the choice is yours. May God help us. There are some people that are very, very much destructive. They cannot build, but they can tear down and destroy. And that's all what they do. Destroy and tear down. The treasury is dry. The $15 billion is gone. The five billion US dollars is gone. Kaisuki is bankruptcy. The country is in bankruptcy. Now they're burning down, destroying the beautiful country. That's the people we have running this nation. Praise the Lord at this time. We don't want to get more, more, more involved in politics. As a man of God, as a prophet of God, I must stand because that's very, very important for this nation. Because at this point in time, the nation is at ransom. And I call on the GCOM chairman retired Justice Claudius Singh to please pro stop prolonging this thing and bring an end to this thing. You can do it. Keep postponing the joining meeting one after the other. The report, can, you can get a report and the commission can make a decision and let it be over with. Whatever happens after them happens. We have backings of the superpower and people will come in and get things solved in this country. Go ahead and do what you have to do in the name of Jesus. Don't prolong. The longer you prolong, the more fire you're causing and more destruction in this nation and more damages. You can face you can damage so fast. And I urge that I pray, I plead with the GCOM chairman, the GCOM chair this morning, before, try your best and get this thing over with. Because if it lasts until next week, you'll be sorry. Many will be sorry. This nation will be in chaos and confusion and destruction. 
First of all, this time, I called my wife, Elizabeth, to come, and we're going to pray for getting to the Word of God. Well, this morning, my message is, labor among lions. Well, they say lion is the king of the jungle, the tribe of Judah, lion. Anyway, it happens to be that I'm a Leo born, I'm born on the 5th of August, and I'm a Leo born a lion. Amen? Praise the Lord. At this time, let's pray. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you thanks, I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and your great concern and the working of the Holy Spirit. I pray God in the mighty name of Jesus to cover me in the precious blood, cover myself and wife under the precious blood, build a hedge around my life. Every spirit of witchcraft and obion and demonic forces and evil and every work of darkness. I command to go in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray God for complete victory, healing, health, and strength, and deliverance in Jesus' precious and gracious name. I pray God for a beautiful nation. And I pray God that you work something in this beautiful nation. And I pray, Lord God, that you heal thy people, one people, one nation, one destiny. And I pray God your will and your plan and your purpose will be fulfilled and accomplished in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and a blessed good morning to all our viewers. My scripture reading is taken from Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. My scripture reading is taken from Daniel chapter 12. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth and shall weep, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting content. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. Next scripture is taken from Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And whatever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for he served the Lord Christ. Next picture is taken from First Peter, First Peter chapter five, verses eight and nine. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that this, that the same afflictions are accomplished. In your brethren that are in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in this country, we have six races. In this country, beloved. And uh, we have some beautiful people. And uh, you know, I have some people working with me. As I said before, 98% of my employees are Afro Ghanese. And I tell you something this morning. I don't know, but I have a driver driving one of my premium cars. You know, and this car, his wife break the windscreen. He has a big apple flag in front of the, the back of the car, driving around all over the place. And I told him, look, this car, do your work. And don't put too much of flags and big, big flags and apple and politics in this car. Do your work. And he was annoyed. His wife break the front windscreen and he did not fix it. And he was trying to cover his tracks and he tried to drive the car into a truck at the side to damage the side. In fact, he drive the car aside the, the truck and the whole one side was damaged and somebody saw it. But I'm a man of God and I pray. He was working with me over two years and did something like that. I was putting bread in his mouth. He would have to punish you that. But the truck driver was an indo Guyanese guy and he paid me to fix the truck although he knew the driver was wrong. He fixed the car for me and you know, and many things, I have buses, windscreen brick, the 
it says good flyout and brake windscreen and one new brand minibus BYY one of the driver told me he crashed in somebody tried to run him off through by coffee square and he crashed up the bus and all sorts of nonsense I'm not buying those things but I want to tell you people are wicked and some people are just wicked and destructive they do not know what people do to own certain things in this country and the loan they take and the, the, the sacrifice they make but some people are so destructive, destructive elements that they want to destroy and destroy this beautiful nation. But this nation will be built back by God's grace. But those things are not right because they'll be a curse for people if we're doing such a wrong things this morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. Forget about that. That's just our three things. But I'm going to preach the word of God this morning. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Labor among lions. Yes, labor among lions. That's my topic for this morning. Labor among lions, part two. Praise the Lord. But this election is on my mind. And I trust the Lord. I pray for this nation that things will get back to normal. I don't know what will happen. The afternoon leader will let me. We don't want to conceive this morning. And they want, they say they win the election. They are saying they already won the election. So I don't know what will happen. Only God can have to keep it Because this, I see this nation as a point of being destroyed. Unless foreign powers, superpowers come in and do something. Anyway, my message this morning, as I said before, for the past four months, I cannot really concentrate on my message. Imagine I'm a prophet, a man of God. What's happening to ordinary people in this nation? This nation has been held hostage. They're affecting their lives and livelihood. The nation, we can't really know what to do. We don't know what next step to take. We don't know what to do. Everything is in standstill. We have the coronavirus uh, to battle with, and now we have a bigger virus, the election virus. People are so bare face. Bullyism, shame face, bare faceness, bullyism, lies, cheating, want to steal the entire election. Can you imagine what's happening in this nation? There's no shame anymore. The world is laughing at us. In fact, not at us, a certain people in this nation. Praise the Lord. Anyway, my message this morning is labor among lions, part two. Now Daniel was anointed by God. Daniel was the man who prayed three times a day and was thrown into the lion's den. But the king was very sorry for Daniel. And he went early in the morning and checked on Daniel and Daniel was there. Lion, God shut the mouths of the lions. But yet they tried to throw mud on Daniel and try to destroy Daniel. They couldn't come up with anything against Daniel. Nothing to pin on Daniel. The man was squeaky clean. I say the man was squeaky clean. Are you clean this morning? It's good to be clean. They couldn't find no corruption in him. There's so much corruption in our nation. Because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. There are so many uh, untrustworthy people in this nation. Is there any trustworthy people in this nation? Nation? There's so much corrupt people in our nation. Finally, these men said, they said, well, we will never find any basic basis for charges against this man Daniel, Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. My friends this morning. They couldn't get Daniel in trouble. For being too bad. The only hope was to nail him for being too good. Has anyone ever nailed you for being too good? Yes it happens. It happened to me many years ago. 20 years ago people were trying to nail me. For being too good. You know because of what? Because of jealousy. Because of envy, because of racialism, because of bullyism. Because when they see you doing certain things, they fool their eyes. And people want what you have, but that was just the beginning. That's what is happening in our nation. People don't want to build when others build. Others are tearing down. But we must work hard and build. That's the only way or else you remain in poverty. They couldn't get Daniel in trouble. For being bad, the only hope was to nail him for being too good. Yes, people always try to nail 
you for being good. So the administrators and the uh, satrap satrapers, the satraps, the satraps uh, went as a group to the king and says, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce a decree that anyone who pays praise to any god or man during the next 30 days except to you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. They are flattering my friends this morning. Good, so good to Darius, the king, who needs God when they who needs God when you have you, they says to the king. O ever live long, king. Why not outlaw pray for a while? Just make sure everybody knows that the government is the supreme source of every good thing. Yes, the government is the supreme source of every good thing. Faith and prayer have no place in the work or schools or government anyway. Anybody who insists on sticking with God instead of worshipping the generosity of big government is a religious fanatic. An enemy of society, such people ought to be lying chow. The king agreed. Yes, the king agreed with what this is. What is the prayer pattern this morning? If your government make government make a law like that, how will you react? If you are not all, all religious, you might say not pray for a month. Uh, no problem. I never pray anyway. If you believe there is a God and pray once in a while, when you want something, you might say sounds like a dumb law. But 30 days without prayer is no big deal. I can always pray again. Once the month is over, it's not worth take risk, risking my neck over that. But how did Daniel react? The Bible says, yes, sir. Now how Daniel learned that the decree had been published. He went home to his upstairs room and there the window opened to Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Yes, Daniel praying and asking God for help. Daniel was a holy and righteous man. Daniel prayed and asked God for help and God heard his prayers. Yes, my friends, Daniel prayed. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days anyone who prays to any god or man except you, O king, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the laws of the Medes and the Persians which cannot be re repealed. Yes, then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah? Pays no attention to you, they told the king. O king, or to the, the decree you put in writing, he still prays three times a day. And when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. When the men went as a group to the king and said to him, Redeemer, O king, that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no decree or etiquette that the king issue can be changed. The king was concerned he had to uphold his own authority and enforce the law he had just put in effect. Yes, the king had to uphold the law he had just put into effect, my friends. So the king gave the orders and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually rescue you. May the God whom you serve it continually 
rescue. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and the rings of the nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not change, my friends. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without entertainment being brought to him that he could not sleep that night. Yes, he loved Daniel because he knew Daniel was a righteous man. Do people love you because you're righteous this morning? Do people love you because you speak the truth? This prophet has been speaking the truth for the past, past four months. And all the religious leaders, most, not, not all, almost, most of them are sweeping sins under the carpet. I appeal to the religious leaders to form a delegation and go and see the caretaker God president and his ministers and let them know that this is wrong what they're doing. The truth always hurts. May a monthly of Barbados speak the truth and they lambaste this woman. Oh, Ralph Gonzal, the, the, <coughs> the chairman of CARICOM, speak the truth and they, they, they talk so many bad. Anybody that talks against this, this government is bad because they're speaking the truth and the truth always hurts. Many Christians are still holding on to the fact that the APNO AFC has won the election. And they're still praying. God will not answer your prayers because God, you cannot break the commandment of God. You cannot lie. You cannot cheat. You cannot be a, have a, be a bullyism and, and do all sorts of wicked things. You know what you're doing, what the Christians are doing? They're damaging this church. The churches in this country will never be the same again. It will be a segregation. The people will segregate themselves because not everybody like lies and cheating and robbery and bullism. It cannot work in the 21st century. It's all open and people are seeing the true colors. How will you get soul saved? People will not want to become a Christian in this nation. They will want to, want to take part. Many are holding the Bible and swearing to uphold the laws and the constitution and telling lies and doing all the wickedness. Many of the politicians pretend to go in church and pray and go on their knees and pray and they're doing all the wickedness. Controlling from outside she come. Doing all sorts of things. Manipulating the court systems. Causing so much corruption in our nation. Which is very wrong. Yes, it's wrong. You find few people with righteousness who will stand up for truth and justice and democracy and not a dictatorship. Yes, God knows what he's doing and God got a reason and a purpose. If God loved this country, he has to get the right people to rule this country. Yes, the people who cares about the people of this nation, not about themselves. I want to fill their own pockets. I want to get filthy richer and they will care what the people, the poor is going through. Yes, there are over 35% of the population in this nation are living below the poverty line this morning. Many people as a pastor, many afro guyanese have told me that they apply for house lots over 10 years, 5 years, 7 years, 8 years. The APNO AFC went in government for 5 years. Let's say 4 years, they were affected for a year. How much people did they get? How much of their people, their own people, did they help to get house lots? Many are coming and telling me, Pastor, they applied so long for house lots and haven't got through. Many are punishing and not, the people don't care about nobody. People just care about themselves. What a chaos and confusion in this nation. Yes, God still loved righteousness. Daniel was a righteous man. He was a man who was not afraid of death. He was not afraid of no one because God was with him. God was with Daniel. He was a truly righteous man who stand up for righteousness. Who don't stand up for perks and position and power and, and sweep everything under the carpet. Everything has been exposed. And God has a saying. God has a saying. Yes, God will expose the sin. And old people got a saying. If it is hard, you're going to feel. Yes, that will what will happen to this nation. And God has a way of exposing sin. My time is almost finished. And I haven't even started preaching as yet. Yes, Daniel was a righteous man. Daniel answered, O king. Live forever, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den 
And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he trusted in his God, my friends. If you were a doubter, you might think Daniel survived or wasn't really a miracle. You might think the lions just weren't nasty or hungry enough to attack. Well, look at what happened next. Yes, look at what happened next. The man who had falsely accused Daniel was brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones, according to Daniel chapter 6. Obviously, my friends, these weren't lazy, friendly lions. The only way Daniel survived was the protection of God and his angels. Do you have the protection of God and his angels upon your life this morning? What does this true story tell us about labor among lions, working in situations that are hard and even hostile? Let's look at four guidelines for dealing with a difficult workplace this morning. Yes, sir. God wants us to be a person of principle. Are you a person of principle this morning? Yes, I ask a question. Are you a person of principle? Yes, sir. Or did cockroach eat out your conscience this morning? There is a saying. Yes, my friends. Daniel was a person of principle. Yes, sir. Are you a person of principle? From the time he was, uh, he first went into job training until the day he died. From a young age, uh, Daniel showed a great deal of ability and promise. Years earlier when Daniel was a youth, he was taken from his family to, in Jerusalem and carried away into Babylon. There he was to be trained to work for the Babylonian king. Yes, my friend, but there was a problem. The young man in the training program was supposed to eat food and drink wine from the king's table. The royal food and drink has been dedicated to pagan gods and violated the dietary, the dietary laws God has given him or uh, given him people at this uh, at that, that time my friends Daniel couldn't could have said I have no choice I better just eat and drink whatever they give me but instead Daniel says my friends Daniel make up his mind not to defile himself he asked the chief official oh, for a different diet the official was uh, reluctant at first uh, but Daniel convinced him to give it a try yes Daniel convinced him convinced him to give it a try and Daniel ended up looking more robust and healthy than the young men who eat royal food this morning yes my friends young people still face tough choices at school you may feel pressure to go along with anti-christian ideas in order to get good grades you may feel pressured to join in drunken parties or immoral sex when you get a job you may be told to work on Sunday instead of worshiping you may be told to cut corners on quality and mislead customers you may be tempted to, to think I have to do what I'm told yes like Keith Lowenfield he has to do what he is told that you come or I'm finished yes when you're scared success depends on acting like a pagan you choice <coughs> you have a choice <coughs> this morning you have a choice my friends <clears throat> but you always have a choice you can choose to stand for your principles or you can give up your integrity yes I heard that she comes shaman says she will stand up for integrity and she will not compromise her integrity and character for all the oil in Guyana, I is still here to, to see what she will do today. Yes, sir. she says she will stand up for democracy and she will not uh, put her integrity and character on the line for all the oil in this nation. My friends, uh, yes, sir. I still want to see what will happen at 2 p.m. today and do what uh, what's the easiest yes my friends uh, you can choose to stand for what is right uh, or you can choose to sell your soul yes uh, you can choose to sell your soul many have sell their souls yes many have sell their soul uh, but i want to tell you in hell the warm diet not uh, and the fire is not quenched uh, for all eternity you have chosen 
where you will spend eternity. Yes, because God does not like liars and cheat and robbers and bullies. Yes, my friends, the choices you make when you're young often turn into lifelong habits. Yes, it often torn into lifelong habits. Uh, what to decide now from your future character for better or worse. Yes, uh, when you're young, the things you do, yes, uh, many, many did wrong in the young days uh, and they have the, they have the habit uh, of continue doing the same thing. Daniel stood up for what? For his principles this morning. I says Daniel stood up for his principles as a young man getting started. As a young man getting started. Yes sir. Yes sir. As a young man getting started. Even though it was a risk. Yes sir. And the habit stayed with him years after years. When Daniel was an old man. His rivals were digging for something bad to accuse him of. <laughs> but they couldn't find anything. All they could come up with was that he lived for God's word and prayed every day. That's the man Daniel, the Camus Twist. Yes, uh, with that he lived by God's words and prayed every day. Yes, uh, what about you, my friends, this morning? Do you put godly principles ahead of pay this morning? Popularity or promotions this morning? Yes, sir. Do you put God principles ahead of stealing an election or trying to commit electoral fraud of all the lies and cheating and bullyism in this nation of Guyana? Above all, popularity or promotion this morning or to remain in power are the nasty things you're doing to remain in power. If your fellow workers spied on you, will they find that you live for God's word this morning? If they accuse you of serving God, will there be enough evidence to convict you this morning? There's so many evidence to convict many Christians in our nation. People are holding the Bible and going to churches. What a shame. What a shame and what a disgrace, said the man of God this morning. What a shame and disgrace, sweeping sins under the carpet because you got promotion, because you get position from the government, you get high rank position and you're also in the churches, running the church with the government agenda this morning and covering up sins. Yes, God will be there enough evidence to convict you. Be a person of principle. Are you a person of principle this morning? Or are you a person of, of a position and perks this morning? Yes, sir. Regardless of the situation. And you're just looking and going and using the people of the churches and covering your sins. Start as young as you can and stay firm in the Lord with e with each passing years. Yes, sir. God wants you to be truthful to yourself and be like Daniel. Daniel was indeed a righteous and holy man. He was a man who never covered sins. He was never a man who was compromised. He did what was right because he was a child of God and his God's integrity was at stake. Yes, sir. His God's integrity was a sticker yes sir i god jesus christ sir. are you truly representing the lord jesus christ this morning yes are you the light of the world or the salt of the earth or are you stink like rotten fish this morning can christ be seen in your life this morning uh, hallelujah can christ be seen in your life are you light as a christian this morning or are you the biggest cheat and robber this morning Yes, my friends, aim for excellence without excuse because we're serving an excellent God. We're serving a great and mighty God, the God that owns the universe, the God that place of made the earth and the sea and the land and formed the earth and the entire world out of nothing. Aim for excellence like Daniel because you're serving a living God. And God, the Holy Spirit, ought to be in your life this morning. Is God, the Holy Spirit, in your life this morning? I'm speaking to Christians. Is God, the Holy Spirit, in your life this morning? Is God, the Holy Spirit, in your life this morning? 
If God, the Holy Spirit, has won the Apno AFC to run this country, they would have won the election with flying colors at the poll of the 2nd of March. After 24 hours, when all the political parties out of the soaps, the tally sheets, they would have found that Apno AFC has won the election and they would have sworn him as the next president. But no! As a man of God, God revealed to me he does not want them to rule this nation. They are destructive element and they cannot run anything. They will bring ruin and disgrace and condemnation to this nation. And this nation will remain in poverty because they do not have the skills and what it takes to run this beautiful nation of ours. Aim for excellence without excuse. Do not blame God. God knows what is best. God knows what he's doing. God chooses leaders. God knows what he's doing. Don't push the hand of God. If you push the hand of God, there will be total destruction. Take it from the prophet and the man of God. Do you want this nation to be destroyed? Do you want this nation to go forward? Or do you want this nation to remain in poverty lower than Haiti? Ten times lower than Haiti. A rogue, condemned, destroyed nation are one of the richest nations in the world. The choice is yours. Go try to take what you can't handle. Praise the Lord. God says, God is speaking through this morning to many people. Aim for excellence without excuse. As Daniel stood up for his principles, he also stood up for the excellence quality of his work. Daniel could have come up with excuses for nothing amounting to anything. He was torn from his family and homeland at an early age. He was part of an oppressed minority. He faced attacks on his religion, but he didn't. He did complain. Did he grip that everything was against him, that he had no choice to succeed? No, Daniel decided to make the most of his abilities in the situation where he found himself already in Daniel's early training, says the Bible, God gave him knowledge and understanding of all kinds of, of literature and learning according to 117. The king found young Daniel 10, 10, 10 times better than the so-called experts throughout his whole kingdom. Hallelujah! Can a heathen found such qualities in you? Pharaoh found such qualities in Dave in Joseph. And Joseph was promoted to next in line to Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. Because he saw something in that young man with many which he didn't saw in nobody else. He saw the spirit and he sensed the spirit of the living God was in him. Joseph, and even so the king found Daniel ten times better than the so-called exports showed this whole kingdom. Today we have so many so-called exports want to run our nation full of trash and garbage and nonsense, advising GCOM how to do their business and embarrassing themselves. You have some lawyers. I don't know if they're able to practice law after this. I don't know if some judge will be able to function after what they did in the appeal court. I don't know if the attorney general will be able to function for the stupidity and the nonsense he's been doing to advising Keith Lonefield and Chicken how to get the thing over with. Fraud, corruption, stealing of election, committing electoral fraud, that's a serious charge. Trust me, many will end up in prison with a life sentence. Praise the Lord. This pursuit, my friends, of excellence began in his youth and stayed with Daniel at every stage of life. Through every change and every new boss. By the time he was an old man, he wasn't working for the Babylonians anymore. The Persians had taken over, but Daniel was still the smallest, hardest worker, working, most capable man around. Are you the most capable man around today, my friends? That's why King Darius wanted Daniel in the top management job. Yes, King Darius wanted Daniel in the top 
management job from youth to old age, Daniel had no time for excuses. He was too busy doing his best. He was too busy doing his best. Are you busy doing your best or are you causing confusion and chaos and destructive elements in this nation? When you burn down the country and destroy the country, who will get poorer? Is the nation will get poorer? Is the people will suffer in this nation? How about you? Do you aim for excellence this morning? God wants you to aim for excellence. I want to encourage people who are aiming for excellence and who are, who are standing up for democracy and truth this morning. God will give you the strength regardless of your race, religion, creed, or color. I pray for you this morning. Never give up. Quitters never win and winners never quit. Stand up for democracy. Stand up for truth. The truth always hurts this morning. Stand up strong in the name of Jesus. Yes, my friends. Yes, how about you? Do you aim for excellence? Do you waste energy on excesses? Yes. Do you complain about your family and upbringing? Uh, do you blame your, your, your feeling of unfair treatment, uh, discrimination, new boss, uh, hostile fellow workers, or whatever else makes your life uh, or your job difficult this morning? Daniel faced uh, all those things, my friends, uh, but he studied his hardest. Uh, he tried his best uh, and ended up accomplishing great things. Your troubles are a challenge uh, to overcome. Not excuses for giving up or going bad. Be a winner, not a whiner this morning. Be a winner, but not a whiner this morning. My wife is behind the camera and she can vouch for this this morning. Because of a political situation in her country, I'm preaching every single day. And I've been checking on the politicians and checking on what's happening in our beautiful country. And I had an online degree study to complete it. And I signed up and I had three subjects to get done, which is about uh, 448 and 11 degree credits. And I just had a short time to push in some study. And I had to make a choice whether I would drop the three subjects or I would complete it. And I says, no God, I will not drop it. I decided to say the last moment I'm going to put it eight hours more and sleep less. And by the grace of God, I've completed two subjects, uh, one with A, and one with B, yes, uh, and I've completed eight degree credits and I have three more. I will complete by now on the 26th uh, of this month. Uh, I have to finish up studies and do the exams and I know I'm going to come through with it. Yes, it's sacrifice. It calls for sacrifice, my friends. Yes, it calls for sacrifice. Be a winner, not a whiner this morning. Whatever you do, work it with all your heart. Uh, as working for the Lord, uh, the Lord is my strength. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Don't let yourself, don't tell yourself you have the right to, to suck up, do shady work this morning. Yes, are you doing shady work this morning? Are you doing shady work this morning for the political parties in GCOM? Trust God and do your absolute best. And do it with decency and honor and respect and integrity. And make up for excellence without excuse. There is no excuse. Stand up for truth, integrity, righteousness, fairness, truth. And hold your integrity and character this morning. Know your boss this morning. Who is your boss this morning? Whatever your boss, whatever, whatever your boss at work might be, your higher boss is always God. I say your higher boss is always God. Are you involved in shady business? Are you involved in cheating and cookery and stealing this morning? Remember your boss is watching you. God is your boss and he's watching. No matter how much you want to, those who work with you to approve you. The highest goal is for God to approve you. My friends, <coughs> the highest goal is for God to approve you. Daniel's boss ruled rule vast, vast empires and had the power of life and death over their subjects. 
Daniel's co-workers were shrewd, shrewd and powerful with many ways of running someone they didn't like him. Yes, uh, Daniel could, could have been in, intimidated by such people, but Daniel knew his supreme boss, the Lord God. Do you know your supreme boss this morning, the Lord God? When his colleagues uh, put the pressure on him and his boss give orders contrary to God's commands, God's orders came first. Yes, uh, did your colleagues put in pressure on you today? Or to do contrary things this morning, my friends? But God orders come first. God of holiness, God of righteousness, God of truth, God of integrity, the God of character, the God of the universe. Whose orders are you taking today? I trust that you're taking the orders from the Lord and do the right thing. Daniel's loyalty to God in the moment of crisis was no accident. The tongue is rolling outside, God is speaking. It was the result of an ongoing walk with God in Daniel's everyday life. There is the very heart of what God, what made Daniel the man he was. He depended on God for strength and guidance for each new day, my friends. No matter how busy he became, Daniel was not too busy to pray. He was too busy, he was too busy not to pray without God's help. Daniel would have been, uh, that would have been crushed by the weight of his work, uh, the difficulty of the decision he had to make, uh, and the hostility of the people around him. Without God, Daniel was lost. And he knew it is, and he knew it, uh, nothing, absolute nothing, could keep him from spending time with God three times each day in prayer. Daniel would rather spend the night with lions than to go a day without prayer. And you want to take a page from Daniel, my friends, today? Friends, a friend asks me, you want to know the number one record of spiritual life and family relationships? He paused a moment and then said, fast food. Fast food snorted. Fast food may be bad for your cholesterol, but how does it hurt uh, your relationship this morning? My friend explained that with uh, uh, microwaves and fast food restaurants, uh, many families don't sit down at meals together anymore or spend time together. Meal time used to be a built-in pause for family members to spend time with each other and with God, but meal time is uh, vanishing. But my friends probably blame too much on fast food this morning. But he was right about wanting relationship. Uh, relationships uh, take time. Many of us don't have a daily pattern where we set aside time for our family members or for God, my friends. Few families read the Bible and pray at mealtime or at any other time of day. And as a result, we feel distant from God, far from family members, and burnt out by daily demands this morning. Am I speaking the truth this morning? Yes, uh, our work often suffer as well. We end up feeling isolated, frustrated, overworked, uh, and burnt out. Uh, we may sink so deep into sin that like the anti-Daniel gang, we are willing to do almost anything to rule others uh, and serve ourselves. Are you doing and try all your best to rule others and serve yourself in this country, my friends, this morning? What about you? Do you depend on God this morning? Do you trust in Jesus as your Savior and Master? Do you spend special time with the Lord every day in prayer and Bible reading? If you want to become a person like Daniel, develop a prayer pattern like Daniel. Yes, develop a prayer pattern like Daniel and stop being a hypocrite. Daniel made a point of scheduling regular conversation with God three times of each day and he couldn't let anything break up his prayer schedule. Not by busyness, not 
tasteless, no, not rivals, not kings or decree, not even hunger, la hungry lions. Don't let big messy masses and busy schedules keep you from doing what even lions could keep Daniel from doing. Lions could keep Daniel from doing what he was doing because God the Holy Spirit was with him. The power of God was in Daniel. Yes, sir. Yes, the power of God was in Daniel. The time you spend with God is the key to everything else you do. So know your boss and keep getting to know him better. Talk and listen to each to God each day. Trust and obey him. No matter what, my friends, we all need God to be in us. Focus on the final outcome. We must all focus on the final outcome. If walking with God seems damaging to our future, remember the end of the story. It's not Daniel who was destroyed. It was the wicked. Yes, God always destroyed the wicked in the end. God always gives people long rope, but at the end they will be destroyed. It was the wicked who was destroyed. In the end, our destiny is in God's hands and depends on our relationship to Him. The ultimate danger is not at the end of lions or human predators who are out to get us. The worst lion, the deadliest man-eater is Satan. Your enemy, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion and looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. People without God are very easy prey for Satan. But the devil cannot devour God's faithful. Are you God's faithful this morning, my friends? Whether God rescue you from the death or let you die for, for your faith, the devil cannot devour you this morning. God prevented lions from eating Daniel. In later times, many Christians were thrown to lion and were torn apart. Either way, God kept them safer. These martyrs were rather, will rather die than deny Jesus. Satan could will devour them, but if they kept the faith, they will live forever. They will rise again. The power of Christ will be in them. That's why the Apostle Paul could say, Shortly before he died for his faith, the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safer to the heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. According to 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18 this morning. My friends, when you come under attack, focus on the final outcome. What happens in Daniel's case is a preview of the final judgment. Daniel was spared and the lions devoured God's enemies. God had showed Daniel that at the end of the world, even greater rescue and even greater punishment are coming. Daniel record the following message from God. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Some, of everlasting, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting in contempt those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who led many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever according to Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and 3 my friends this morning my friends this morning Jesus is coming again and when he does the bodies of all the dead will be raised and judged the final outcome of every one of us will be either un unending hell or everlasting life in heaven depending on your relationship with the Lord yes my friends it's crazy to sell your soul for short-term success in this final result in hell it's not a bad deal to suffer for a few problems but now now if the final outcome is eternal reward my friends yes so focus on the final outcome this morning in the end my friends God always makes things right for those who trust Him this morning. Yes, sir. for those who trust Him. Labors, labor among lions this morning. Yes, my friends, 
Yes, uh, this morning I'm going to call my wife Elizabeth to come and we're going to pray this morning before I dismiss uh, the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you thanks. I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy and your great concern and the working of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit this morning. I bring our beautiful nation before you this morning, the nation of Ghana, which is corrupt with a political system, oh Father. Lord, you know the chaos and the confusion, and I pray, God, you bring us halt and a stop to it today in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, right now you prepare the GCOM chairman and the commissioners and the CEO or the assistant uh, the deputy CEO oh, who have to make uh, uh, what they submit the report uh, and the chairman make our declaration. I pray, God, everything will done decently and in order this morning and this nation will move forward for you God you believe your God of holiness and righteousness so father and I pray God for integrity and righteousness will prevail in this nation I pray God I destroy every wickedness every spirit of bullyism every spirit of racialism every spirit of confusion every power drunk spirit this morning every deceitful spirit uh, every cheating spirit uh, every lying spirit every frauding spirit uh, i destroy under the blood this morning and I set this nation free this morning. I set your people free this morning. I pray God this nation will not go down in the Guinness Book of Record as one of the rogue, destroyed condemnation, but it will go down in history as one of the blessed and one of the richest country in this world. Lord, this country has so much resources, oh, unlimited resources, and now we have the oil, but all it has is bad management bad management and I pray God help us to get right management to manage our resources yes, that this nation can move forward. Yes, we do not want dunces to run this nation. We want intelligent people to make policy and able to build the economy and create jobs that the people will have a decent life and a decent